All right, we're going to attempt to run this at 48 volts now on the input side. Added two more batteries. And we're going to again charge up 48 volts of batteries that are 10 times the size. So we're going to disconnect the inverter here. So we don't want that plugged in at the same time. You can see the batteries are back after about 15 minutes to exactly the way where they were before. So um, what we put in is what we got out. So we're going to turn on the charging or the input battery and we're sitting at 51.3 not quite fully charged but it's up there. So um, there's our amp meter and we're going to turn this on We'll start off by running one coil. We'll turn that one on. And we'll give this a push start. So you can hear it running here. So we've got one coil. It's already starting to charge. We're not pushing very many amps again, but now we're at 48 volts, so we're about 2 amps. So we want to watch all the um, all the temperatures now. <clears throat> so we're at the lowest setting on the pot, but we want to make sure we don't blow anything out. So we want to take precautions here. So I think though I'm ready to just feel the temperature on these resistors. They're all good. I could go much lower, probably half. We just don't want to put too much stress on the pot here. I'm raising this. The yeah, bulb is not working very well. So again, I can turn this. So we're discharging the primary battery, of course, but we are charging up the very large batteries here. And we're only pushing right now about four, about four amps. So we're going to push it a little bit harder yet. You can see it's picking up quite a bit more speed here. Charging rates increasing. We can hear vibrations here. So now we're at, again, 5 amps. We got a vibration point here. Um, everything's starting to vibrate around here. So we're going to just take this off here so it doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> but we are charging the batteries. Let's go again and look at the amp meter. We're just over 5 amps, maybe about 6 amps now. Let's go check our temperatures. First we want to check this pot, see if that's getting warm. It's not very warm. Uh, it's a little bit warm actually. We want to see these resistors here. Again, they're cool. Let's check the temperature on them. 70 degrees. This is warming up this pot a little bit. So we could probably tune this a little bit better. So now it's coming down the RPMs. So I'm going to move it back a bit. It's not necessarily the fastest RPM that we're after. But it is um, the best charging rate. 
course, this thing's making a big noise. Again, this is our prototype, first prototype, so it, it didn't have all the vibration out of it. Um, but, you know, at various RPMs, it will be smoother. So let's, again, see if we can adjust this to get it going a little bit better. So again, we're about six amps, 48 volts, charging 48 volts as well, but 10 times the battery size. not check the RPM yet on this, but we're after charging. So we have all the coils connected. If I disconnect, so you can feel it go down. So now what we could do is also play around with the gaps. Um, they're not even exactly perfect. Um, some of them are farther apart than others. Um, but we could adjust those too, um, and they would give us uh, draw more or less current, run more or less better. Um, so again, we've charged up these batteries. We're going to turn it off now for six amps input so it's disconnected turned off it's just the momentum of the flywheel running right now which is again powering this little generator coil which is powering the LEDs to give us a little bit of a light show so these primary batteries will uh, jump back up to 51. Uh, they haven't been discharged very much. They've only been discharged at 6 amps, which they could do for a long, long time. Um, so you'll see the voltage climb on this back. And the other batteries, though, the voltage will only go down to about 49.1 or 2. Um, they haven't been charging very long, but they would um, definitely give us some power here, and that's what we're going to do is connect up, again, the inverter, 2400-watt inverter. We're going to connect up to just 24 volts, again, not the 48 that we've been charging. So you got to do the math in your head here. Okay, so 49.2, and we're going to turn the inverter on now, 24 volts in, and we can turn on, um, well, we've already turned on the heater, but let's, well, let's do it anyway. So this is 1,500 watts, standard resistive heater and it draws down the battery under load it's going to bring the voltage down a little bit see the motor's still winding down so we're going to turn this off you can see battery voltage bouncing back and now we're going to turn on the lights again remember with renaissance Going green saves you money. <laughs> so again, we can see the meter moving. Here. 2200 watts of bulbs. Putting a load down on the batteries. 
So you can do the math. Uh, 6 amps at 48 volts is the input. And here we have um, uh, 2200 watts over 24 volts only. Um, so we could discharge these batteries as well, but we're not doing that because this is only a 24 volt inverter and I'm not going to parallel the batteries up. So now if we again turn it off, let's turn the light switches off. This is just a demonstration of how you would run the system. So now you can see the voltage is bouncing back up and it will eventually settle at about 40.1 volts. So it does run at 48 volts, uh, this particular setup, but I would probably change these resistor values again to, um, to get it right where I want it to be. Uh, pushing at least 15 amps, maybe 20 amps at 48 volts, and uh, therefore do a whole lot more charging than what this is doing right now. But in that case, I would replace the pot with um, with some solid larger resistors um, instead of uh, adjustable resistor. And then this is capable of running at 150 volts input. In that case, you'd remove the neon bulbs. And then you'd have to have a suitable battery bank that would receive the charge. Otherwise, you'll blow up the circuits. So running it at that voltage, you're looking at maximum one amp per transistor that you would be drawing. Uh, that you, the input would be going through and um, at 150 volts that's the safe operating area of, of that transistor. Um, so this is capable of quite a bit of power if you push it and if you carefully monitor the heat um, you can push these transistors to 16 amps um, up to 20 volts uh, but you'd have to have it more suitably, um, the, the heat would have to be dissipated better than what we are doing here. But you can see again the battery on this full bank of 48 volts is now up to 49, where we exactly where we started, and it's a little bit higher because that will bounce back up to 49.1 in just a couple minutes. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed my basic demonstration videos.